What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Sue on This Podcast. I hope you had a fantastic week, as always. I personally took the entire week off and just spent it with my family as uh, our oldest daughter was on spring break this week. My wife, who works in the school system, was also on spring break. So uh, I took off to spend time with my family, and we pretty much did absolutely nothing but hung around here locally and uh, did some fun stuff exploring the area around us, which I've talked about before in previous episodes that sometimes uh, we don't need to go do something extra, uh, ex- ex- extravagant, there we go, um, in order to make memories with our family, but we just need to go do something. And uh, sometimes I could just be exploring our own backyard in order to do that. And so we got the opportunity to do that this past week and absolutely enjoyed it. Um, Also turned 35 this week, uh, this past week anyways. So that's a whole new adventure going on uh, in my life. And uh, uh, yeah, it's just a crazy week for us. We even had tornado warning with a couple of tornadoes around us uh, for all of our Wisconsin friends that are listening. We made it, you guys. Uh, but yeah, crazy, crazy week. Um, but now as we shift into this week, we are now in the middle of Holy Week. So if you're a follower of Jesus, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, if you aren't a follower of Jesus, you might be asking the question, well, what is Holy Week? And Holy Week is really everything. It really started yesterday as a Sunday and I, it progresses all the way through this week. And what it is, is it's the week leading up to um, the crucifixion and the resurrection Easter Sunday. And um, there's like this narrowing focus within the story of Jesus where we kind of see all the events that are leading up to that faithful day of his crucifixion. And then, of course, the grand day of the resurrection. And in there, we see we see some of the big stories that many of us are familiar with, like the idea of Jesus, um, you know, overturning tables in the temple, um, Palm Sunday, which was yesterday, all of the people in Jerusalem and just screaming out Hosea, uh, Hosanna uh, to Jesus as he is on his way in riding on a donkey. We get the story of the Last Supper. So Jesus washing his disciples feet. Um, this is the week where Judas, uh, during that Last Supper, will betray Jesus. Peter, one of his disciples, denies even knowing Jesus. So all of this happens within this week time frame. Now, the reason why I get excited about this is really it boils down to this. So for us in our life, we all have choices that we have to make every single day. Some of them are big choices. Some of them are small choices. But either way, we have choices that we have to make. And I think that for many of us, we can have this assumption that if you believe that there's a God and if you believe the God of the, in the God of the Bible and you believe that Jesus is who he says that he is, I think that we can build up this mis conception um, and this misunderstanding that Jesus had to go to the cross. Um, And and I feel like we can build this up because we know that's what he did. We know that Jesus had to do that in order for there to be an atoning of our sins, Um, which basically, if you don't believe in any of the stuff that I'm talking about, the reason why it's such a big deal really goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, where we see Adam and Eve sin against God by um, taking the fruit and eating it. Um, but we also see in there where God even made a promise that there was going to come a point in time where he was going to uh, redeem all that which was lost, which for him, the most important thing was us, his creation, um, and it says that he loves us so much. Um, so this is all important because God is saying that there is a plan in order to redeem that what which is now broken. And that was ultimately going to come through Jesus. And that's why all this is so important. And that's also the reason why there's this um, understanding or could be this understanding that Jesus had to do this because this was ultimately God's plan. But what is fascinating is that when you actually read the accounts of everything that happens here during Holy Week, and you specifically get to uh, the Last Supper and the events that happen after the Last Supper, which would be Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, what you see taking place is Jesus is left with a choice in front of him. And the choice is whether or not he would go and do what it was that he was 
ultimately the only one able to do, which was to take on the cross in order to um, atone for man's sins, in order for us to have forgiveness, for there to be a redemption um, and reconciliation between us and God, or he could have chosen not to. That was his choice. And again, um, I think that's why it's so important that we understand that it was a choice because the choices that we make have major effects in the long run. And um, what's interesting is as we are heading into this week, knowing that Jesus 2000 years ago had this choice that was before him, obviously this side of the cross, we get, we already know what that choice was that he made. And for those of us who have placed our hope and trust in Jesus, man, we are so thankful that he made that choice. And honestly, I don't know that many of us could make a choice like that other than Jesus, because Jesus was not sinful, right? It's the reason why he could be that ultimate sacrifice. Uh, For us, we tend to be so sinful that we only care about our selfish needs and our comfort. um, And we put our needs before anybody else. And obviously, that's not who our God is. But what's fascinating is as as we enter into this week, I came across a quote I don't necessarily know that as a quote, but I came across this um, phrase, if you will. I guess it's a meme, maybe. I don't know. Um, It might be a quote, um, and I just never heard it before. But I came across this, and I thought it was so fascinating to read heading into this week. And I'll read it to you. It says this. It says, marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Choose your heart. Obesity is hard. Being fit is hard. Choose your heart. Being in debt is hard. Being financially disciplined is hard. Choose your heart. Communication is hard. Not communicating is hard. Choose your heart. Life will never be easy. It will always be hard. But we can choose our heart. Pick wisely. So this is my... um, really my encouragement for you as we enter into this week is we have a God who is very much aware of the choices that we have to make. Um, I love the fact that what the Bible portrays of Jesus is it tells us that he is 100% God and he's 100% man. All the choices that we face, Jesus faced. All the same temptations that we face, Jesus faced. And Jesus is not only that ultimate example of how we can get over these things and get moved past these temptations and and whatnot, but um, he is the fulfillment of these things. You know, every single time that we have this desire for something, ultimately Jesus is the ultimate fulfiller of any kind of desire that we have because um, he is everything good. So all good things that we want in life um, If we want it too much, all good things could end up being a bad thing when we end up worshiping that thing or or idolizing it or um, wanting it too much, right? But Jesus is the ultimate good, and that's why he is supposed to be the thing, and it is the, he is the thing that we desire most. The interesting part is a lot of us, we fall into addictions and traps and all that kind of stuff because there's some kind of void that we're trying to fill in our life. And we fill we try to fill that void with so many different things when ultimately Jesus is the thing that fills that void. But it's the choice. It's the choice that we have to make. So my encouragement to you this week is choose your right heart. When we have to have, when we're having to make a choice this week, choose the right heart. In fact, I would even say, take the example of Jesus, because when he's in the garden of Gethsemane and the choice is before him, do I go the path of the cross or do I choose a different direction? He's weighing uh, what is at stake in that moment, his comfort or the world, us, you, me. Um, And in that, he doesn't just choose off of his own um, wishful desires or anything like that, but he's actually spending time with God in prayer. In fact, it even says that he retreated to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray as he often did. So this is a common occurrence for him. This is part of his regular routine that he comes to be with the Father in prayer, um, conversing with him. And in in this pivotal moment of history, he's saying, here are my choices. This one's hard. But to be separated from those that I love most, that too is also hard. So he's placing these two hard decisions at the foot of God and says, 
I don't want this. I also don't want this. But if there was any other way for me to redeem that which was lost in order to save that which I love, I would rather do that. And ultimately, what we know, again, this side of the cross is that there was no other choice. While Jesus had the choice to either do it or not, there was no other choice for choice for the redemption of you and me in order for us to have the chance of eternity, in order to spend eternity with God and be back in right relationship with Him. There was no other choice than the cross. So in the moment where Jesus has to make a choice, He lays it before God and says, I would rather do something else, but if this is the choice, this is the one that I will take. I will choose this hard. So again, my encouragement for you this week is choose the right hard. I know that will be difficult. I know that there will be moments where even one hard choice will seem better um, in the immediate. But when you really think about the long-term lasting impact of the choices, one is going to be better than the other. It's still going to be hard, but it's going to be better. And let me encourage you that as you're having to make a hard choice this week, as we all will, bring it to the foot of the cross first. Bring it to God and ask him, which hard choice would you have me make that will represent you um, ultimately before the people that will see the impact of this in the long run? Whether that's fighting for your marriage, whether that is fighting for financial freedom, uh, whether that's fighting for health, whatever the choice is that you have to make this week, choose the right hard, but let God be the one who gives you the strength in order to make that choice. So um, enjoy this week. Um, I, there are tons of great Bible reading plans out there right now that are going through Holy Week. So again, if you don't know anything about what Holy Week is, um, reach out. I'd love to have that conversation with you or uh, do some research on your own. This is a fantastic week to celebrate all that our God has done for us because of his great love for us. Um, if you don't have a church to be a part of, I would encourage you join me um, at Lakeland online this upcoming week. If you are local and you're listening to this, join me for service. We're going to have tons of great opportunities for you to come join us for service as we uh, celebrate Easter this upcoming weekend. But all that being said, I hope you have a great week. Again, if you would help me by sharing this with others, subscribing, uh, leaving a rating and review, that would be awesome. If you want this coming straight to your email, that way you're not having to wait to see when these episodes are going to pop up um, on any of your podcast listening platforms. Uh, you can hop over to stuartmcpherson.org and if you scroll to the bottom, you can sign up for the Be Blessed newsletter. And uh, every single time that I have new episodes coming out on either Stu on This or the Metaverse Church podcast or I have a new blog coming out, they'll come straight to your email so you don't have to go searching for any of those things. But until next week, be blessed. <laughs>